there. Happy Tutorial Thursday. Today I'm going to show you how I created this image of the Queen Anne's Lace. Um, this is the finished image and I'm going to take you through all the steps. You can see I use lots of textures on this one. And this is our original image and that's what we're going to start with. So let's get right to it. First I'm going to duplicate my background layer and I like to use the keyboard shortcut Control J which is on a PC. It'd be Command J on a Mac. And I'm going to hide the background layer because we're going to mask away um, the background from this flower. So I'm going to use the quick selection tool. And under that, I decided to try select subject <clears throat> to see how good Photoshop could select our subject. So it takes just a few seconds. And I can see that it did a pretty good job of getting the main part of the flower. It did miss a little bit of the stem, so I'm just going to select that additional stem there. And then I'm just going to click on the Add a Layer Mask icon down here at the bottom of my Layers palette, and it's going to automatically mask that flower. So I can see that it um, missed some of the areas in between, so I decided to try using the Magic Wand tool and this actually did a pretty good job in this case. So I'm just going to click in one of these darker areas and you can see it's made a whole lot of selection. Um, so instead of just deleting the selection, I'm going to fill this selection with black so it will add to this mask. Um, normally we're, when we're creating a mask, we're painting with black to hide what we want to hide. So I'm just going to, um, I, my foreground color is at black already. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt backspace. On a Mac that is Command Delete. And if I do a Control D to deselect it, you can see I've gotten rid of some more of the areas in between. So I'm going to do that again over here. Select another area. Alt backspace, Control D. And let's try one more time up here. Alt backspace, Control D. And we got a pretty good selection of our flower, and I can go in and, you know, really fine-tune this if I wanted. Um, I'm actually going to take a brush, a round brush with black, and I've got a couple of kind of half-showing uh, little branches there, so we're just going to get rid of those. But I think that looks like a pretty good selection, so we're going to go ahead and start building the texture. Now, of course, when I create something like this, it's a lot of trial and error before I end up finding the textures and, and things that I want to use. Actually, there's some brushwork in this one as well. So I'm going to select the background layer because as I'm bringing in textures, anytime we add a layer, it adds above the active layer. So by selecting the background layer, it's going to put that texture behind our actual flower that we want to use. So I am working with two monitors, so I am going to drag my textures over from my other monitor instead of doing file open because I have them all set up and ready to go. So if you just see them magically appear, that would be why, because I'm dragging in from another monitor. And then I'm going to resize this to our size here. And we can either hit the check mark or just hit the enter key on your keyboard. And this one, since it's my background, I'm going to leave this at the normal blending mode and 100%. And then I'm going to start bringing in some other colors on top of this. So the next one I'm going to use, um, and these are all my own textures. These are from the different collections um, on the website. Actually, most of what I'm using right now, these four textures I'm going to use, are all from the different Boca collections. Uh, so you can find those in the Peacock Studio if you wish. And don't forget, I do have a sale going on right now on some of my new texture sets um, at 50% off for another week or so. Um, so this one, the gray-blue grunge, we are going to change our blending mode to multiply. And I'm going to lower the opacity way down to 25%. And you can see now we've, we've given a little more depth to that um, background that we started with. And I actually, because this texture, I'm looking back at it and trying to remember what I did. Because this, let's hide this one for a second. Um, this soft color one has this blue area up here. I'm actually going to rotate it so that that is down behind the stem and not in the middle. 
So I'm going to just back off a little bit and I'm going to use my move tool so I get the handles and I'm just going to grab that and rotate it around. And a tip, when you start getting close to square, if you then hit the shift key, it will jump right to a perfect, um, perfectly straight texture. So you can see the that blue area now is behind the stem and I think that works better and gives us a nice color up top. So let's turn that one back on. And again, this is all part of playing around with the textures. Um, you can invert them, you can flip them horizontally, vertically, whatever works for the project that you're working on. So next I'm going to bring in another bokeh one that's just the gray-blue. Again, we're going to make it the size of our image. Enter. And this one I'm going to do at multiply as well. <clears throat> and I'll leave this one at 100%. And then I'm going to add um, a little bit of grunge to this with a, a brush. So I want to add a new blank layer. So I'm going to go down here at the bottom of the layers palette, click on this little plus sign. I want to get a blank layer so I can use my brush. I'm going to grab my brush tool. I'm going to go up and select. Um, this was from my collection, the grunge texture brushes set to. And I'm going to use number three, the rough texture. And I want to change my color. And I know I wanted to use a dark brown, so I, because I've done this before, I wrote down the color number so I can replicate it. And then I'm going to make my brush as big as I can, still staying in the confines of the um, parameters of our image. And I'm going to click just one time, and I want to make sure too, because I was playing with my brushes. Yep. I want my opacity to be at 100% and the flow at 100%, because we can always adjust the opacity later of this layer. So I'm going to click just one time. Now I need to stretch that across the image. So I'm going to do Control T to get the transform handles. And I'm just going to stretch that so that it matches. Um, to the other side, and if we missed a little bit, we can stretch that. Hit our check mark. And now for this one, I'm going to go to a blending mode of soft light, and I'm going to lower that to 45%. And you can see it just added a little bit more, let's get rid of that, a little bit more um, of the grunge factor to the background. So now I wanted to add a few textures on top of the image to try and bring all of the colors together so that the, the flower blended better with the background. So I'm going to add this pale tan soft. This is also from my Boca collections. And we're going to use this one at soft light and 85%. And you can see now we've kind of tied together the color of the flower more with the color of the background. And it also lightened up our background because we were a little dark before. So this kind of is tying it together and giving it some brightening. And then the last thing I wanted to do was to add a frame around this. So I'm going to use another brush. So add another layer. Go back to our brush tool. And this one is, um, this is a set I downloaded from the web. I, actually don't remember which company because I have so many of these, um, but I'm going to use this brush number four. And as you know, in the uh, Tuesday blog posts, when I find cool freebies, I do share those with everybody. And I'm going to use the same color as we did for the other brush. So I'm just going to line this up at the corner, click one time, do the control T to get the transform handle. And we're going to stretch that out, hit our check mark. And this we're also going to do at soft light. And we're going to bring it down to about 65%. And there you go. And that would be our finished image. And then I just added my watermark. Um, so you can see there it was all set. And we are good to go. So we've replicated it. 
And so it's a matter of when you're working with the multiple textures like that, just trying some things together, see how they work. Um, I've tried several things before I came up with the ones that I ended up liking for this image. Um, so have fun and play, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.